Welcome to our new home. Let's go. Starting off in the bedroom. Every morning, rise and shine. You're gonna get out of bed. And it is a little bit of an exercise to get in and out of the bed. This is how I get in. And as you can see, there is just a little bit of leg room. We are in the alcove of the box truck right now and we decided to build the bed up here because this allowed us to have a permanent bed. Moritz did not want to set up the bed every single day and now that we have everything built, I 100% agree with him. We've also got these little pouches that we've built up here and Moritz also built a USB plug at the bottom here is our little bookshelf where we keep our climbing books and our mushroom field guide so we don't die when we go harvest mushrooms. We have a games box in here and our skylight adds so much light into the box truck. We added this early on in the build because we didn't have enough light in this area of the box truck and we have to say that it was one of the best decisions that we made. Next up, we've got these drawers that we build ourselves. They're on both the left side as well as the right side. We wanted to maximize the space of the overhang of the mattress and we couldn't find pre-built drawers that fit in these spaces. So of course we had to build them ourselves. But luckily enough, the ones that we built ourselves are like super duper sturdy. They are like full width of this space here. And this here is our bathroom. We've got a low flow shower head, a composting toilet that we built ourselves. It is true that you cannot smell what's inside the toilet when the lid is closed. When you do need to go about doing your business and open the lid, it doesn't like hit you in the face, but it definitely smells like an outhouse. So just a realistic fact about van life. We have hot water in our van that is powered by our solar and we built our shower pan ourselves out of fiberglass and epoxy. Uh, you can catch that in our build series actually. And after you're done your business in the bathroom, it's on to the kitchen. So when you come into our van, the first thing you'll notice is probably our butcher block countertops. We need a counter space because we love cooking and we just never had counter space in our apartment so we decided to overcompensate with our dream home here. We have IKEA cabinets underneath and we are currently using magnets to keep them shut. They don't work. When we figure out a way to make it work we'll let you know. In this cubby space we wanted like easy access for stuff that we use on a regular basis such as our knives. We like having our knives inside the knife block. Neither of us are fans of having magnetized knives like this because it just makes your space look like an armory. In the back, we've got a ceramic tile backsplash hexagonal and we really love it. So up top here, we've got a cabinet which is the bottom of our wardrobe cabinet. It's just an Ikea cabinet that we got secondhand from Kijiji, which is Canada's Craigslist, I guess. And right here, we're using a ball joint locking mechanism. All of our toiletries are in here for quick access. We literally just pull this bucket out and it's got everything we need for getting ready in the morning. Toothbrushes are in here as well and just some quick access stuff that we need. 
for cooking, we just use a Coleman propane stove. We usually take this outside and put it on the back platform so that we don't get cooking fumes in here. When it's raining, we'll just turn on the fan as we're cooking so that all the cooking fumes get sucked out. And usually we store this underneath our couch so it doesn't take up too much space. For our switches, Moritz magicianed everything out of this little mini panel. And from here, we can control the light in the shower, the water pump, the hot water tank, turning that on, kitchen lights, as well as a main switch, which turns all the lights off. Right here, we've got a four and a half cubic feet dorm fridge that we got for another steal. It was $80 and Moritz modified it so that it would work with our inverter. It is just a fridge. There are fridge and freezer options, but we decided to just go with the fridge option because that is the bulk of what we eat. On this side of the house, we've got our sink. So all the plumbing is on one side of the box truck. This is not a regular faucet. It is a pot filler and it's awesome because it is both a water, a fresh water dispenser, as well as a regular water dispenser. So you'll notice we've got two spouts here, or two spouts and two handles. And if I turn on this handle, this water actually goes through an extra filter so that the water tastes super yummy. And this spout here just takes water straight from our tank below. Uh, we've got 90 liters of water with us and having this window here is just such a beautiful space to have. It brings in so much light. The windows were already in when we purchased this truck so that saved us a ton of headache for cutting and sealing windows because that's apparently not the easiest job to have. We've got a smoke detector up here and a carbon monoxide detector all in one and we have a sink from Ikea that was 30 bucks. I really love this part of the counter. Moritz designed it and it opens like this. There's a piece of really strong magnet right here and the garbage can. Super nifty and you can pull this entire thing off to access the stuff underneath which Moritz will go over later. All right, let's move on to the dinette. So after you make your morning cup of coffee, you're gonna wanna sit and enjoy it. We've got our dinette over here with cushions that we made ourselves. Like literally we hacked up a mattress and made these great cushions. We sewed the covers for them as well. And here is a table, Murphy style. So actually, you just unlock it here and it pops down. So we do all of our work here. We have our dinner here. Um, it's yeah, pretty cozy. And one of the cool things about this space is it was designed so that this would be a standing desk so that we can work this way. If I just put this back up real quick. Let's take a moment to talk about how beautiful this ceiling lamp is. Moritz loves doing driftwood lamp pieces. This is his second one and it was just driftwood from Humber Bay in Toronto near our old neighborhood. Really good add. It's really nice rustic aesthetic to this place. We've also got four USB outlets on that side so you can easily plug in your phone and devices. We've got four regular outlets on this side so we can plug in our laptops and other camera stuff. Here's the magic part. This actually converts into a couch. Let's do it! And here's our little couch! It's so comfy. Actually, if you are a small person, you're welcome to come stay with us because this technically ugh, converts into a bed. How comfortable. I guess that's a little a bit of a stretch, huh? But so I love this space. I want to get up now. <laughs> okay, on to the next. Ugh. So we've got some extra storage underneath this couch here. So if I just remove some of these cushions. We've got a massive amount of storage underneath our seats. This also opens up like this. We've got a whole monitor stored underneath here for editing. 
and a monitor arm. And yeah, it's just a ton of storage that we were very grateful for. So on this side of the house, we've got our wardrobe, which is the other piece of our upper cabinet. And magically, we fit all of our clothes in here. And we've even got one cubby here just for laundry. So all of our clothes are in here, plus actually the clothes in the other storage space. Um, this is just a little nook where we usually store the middle cushion. So if we've got friends coming to visit, they don't have to awkwardly squeeze themselves be between us and make a mochiko sandwich, but if that's their thing, we welcome mochiko sandwiches. We've also got our control panel for our Ava Spatia heater on this side. The heater actually came with a box truck, so all Morris had to do was fix it up, clean it up, and it's actually connected to our main fuel tank, and it uses gasoline. So we don't have to carry an extra source of diesel or propane, which some other heaters use, and it's super duper convenient that way. So we needed a really big storage area for all of our climbing gear, and we came up with this space underneath here. It just pops off like this. It's held together with magnets, and all of our hiking, climbing packs are down here, as well as our inverter. Our plumbing goes on behind here as well. And we've also got a reboost. It turns on on this side by hitting this one switch. And I just have to reach in here, grab the Wii Boost, and put it on top of the table to be able to use. And it's actually significantly increased the performance of our internet connection. So back here is our garage mudroom area. We've installed two bike holders here so our bikes just sit side by side. We do have to take off the front wheels for everything to fit. We've got garage carpeting in the back to protect the walls and to protect the bikes from banging against the wall as we're driving. A fire extinguisher in case of emergencies. A couple of stick clips and that's about it. So in this back mudroom area, we've got a shelf that Moritz built. We wanted to make sure that everything was easy to reach on the way out. We've got a cubby down here for our shoes. And of course we wanted to make sure that all of this stuff plus this little space back here of our other shoes was something we could reach just by standing outside or stepping on the platform without having to climb to the front of the truck. So climbing shoes back here, if you're a climber, you know that you want to keep shoes as far away from you as possible after a long day on the mountain. We've also got space down here for clunkier items like our camping chairs, we've got snowshoes down here, a yoga mat, and um, as you saw earlier, the little slide-in board for our couch. So we raised the dinette 10 inches to be able to afford the storage underneath for awkward shaped items. And yeah, if you have any ideas or feedback about how we can make the inside of our box truck of our home better, then definitely leave it in the comments below. All our main electrical is sitting down here. And for easy access, I made this whole thing removable just on these two blocks here and then you can freely access the electrical and the plumbing. We also store our toilet paper in here. <laughs> our solar panels produce 400 watts. We have four 100 watt panels and they feed into our main battery which is a 24 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate oxide battery. From there we feed it into all our electrical devices like lights, USB plugs, the water heater, the fridge through an inverter and that's how the whole truck is being powered. For bad days when the weather isn't really that favorable for solar we got a battery booster that takes the power from our alternator and also feeds it in the battery and well, it takes around about five to eight hours to get a full charge, so it's rather slow. But the reason is because our car is a 12 volt car and we have a 24 volt battery. Also, what we got underneath here is our water heater. It's a 10 liter water heater and we plugged in a 600 watt heating element. It's also running directly off the 24 volt of our battery, so we don't have any losses as compared to if we had to run it through an inverter. 
all our lights and the water heater and really everything is controlled by our home automation system. It's a Raspberry Pi that sits underneath here as well, together with a little wireless access point that serves all the wireless connections for our various actuators, like lights, like the water heater, and we also can read the solar charger from this little device and see how much solar we produce and how much we consume. And on the flip side, I can control everything through a tablet. So when I'm lying in bed and I expect I want to get a shower in the morning, I just press a button and can turn on the water heater and I can also monitor if it's running. And of course you don't always want to do the control through a tablet and hence I installed a couple of small buttons in the truck and you can control the lights and our pump and whatever from these buttons. The inverter is located as far away possible as we could get it from our plumbing so in case there's any leaks we don't get mains voltage and water mixed up. For our main lights we have a bunch of LED strips. It's uh, RGB LEDs plus warm white and a regular white tone so we can really mix any color we want to. And then we have a bunch of smaller lights like this kitchen light that just gives us a nice light over our workspace. Our water comes in through this little spout here and fills our 90 liter water tank that sits under the car. We decided to leave it outside because we hopefully don't have to camp out ever in winter. And here was just so much space left over so it's sitting between the frame of the car and fits really well in there. In the back we have a connector to our water as well so we can like hook up a little spouty here and wash our stuff outside or if you need to wash your hands or your bikes whatever it hooks up and I can easily remove it from here and just store it away. In the case we need some 12 volt power here for example, we have a compressor to pump up our bikes or to pump up a flat tire. I installed an auxiliary outlet here that connects to our battery in the front. The box was already outfitted with this short power plug, so we can hook up to a campsite. And it also has a few outdoor mains plugs, so we can hook up our laptops and stuff. And then down here, also very convenient is this giant toolbox which houses all our tools and spare gas and everything that you want to carry around but not necessarily need to keep inside of the box. All our grey water gets collected in this pipe and then comes out here. Um, when we are like on crown land or where it doesn't matter so much we just dispose it onto the ground. We use biodegradable soap, so I don't see a big issue. And when we're in the city, I have this 20 liter tank here that just hooks up with this hose and we can collect our gray water and not dispose it in the wild. And this is for driving cab. We got ourselves a 2009 GMC Savannah G3500. It's the 4.8 liter V8 gasoline engine. It eats quite some gas so on the highway we get about 18 to 20 liters per 100 kilometers and if we are in city traffic 25 to 30 so this giant box is very awkward to reverse and um, that's why we got a huge set of cameras. One pointing directly down on the hitch, the other one pointing back so I can see back traffic. And then even two on the side so I don't run over any cyclists. And next to it of course we have giant mirrors which make it finally pretty easy to reverse this thing. And here we have it. We see that the roof is scorching hot. The fan cover is open and currently we are pulling in quite a lot of wattage from our solar system. Our cabin 
connects directly to the box in the back. And of course, for safety reasons, installed a lock here so nobody can get in. This will be our camouflage and we could probably even hide our door here so people don't even think they can access the box from here. The whole idea was to make the box truck as beautiful as we could on the inside and as ugly as we could on the outside to be as stealth as possible because this thing is not at all stealth. You could see it from like miles away. At least you can hear it squeak from a mile away. As climbers, we know how important rubber is. So we went for some Scorpion Pirelli tires. It's uh, 245, 75, R16 tires. Um, they have some pretty decent grip. Uh, it was a little muddy coming up here, as you can see. Uh, we still made it, didn't get stuck. So happy with these tires. If you're curious about why we decided to go for van life and build out this box truck, first and foremost, it was to inspire people like you because we are just average people who used to work our nine to fives and we really wanted to get outdoors more often because we love climbing and we love spending time in nature. But living in the city was just not conducive to that kind of lifestyle and we realized that we needed some change we needed to at least try out what it was like to live like a nomad and see for ourselves if this is a lifestyle for us originally i actually wanted to build out a sprinter van and more has something to say about that <laughs> <laughs> well, i was looking into box trucks and then we came up onto this one and it was perfect like it's fairly cheap compared to a box, uh, to a sprinter van um, everything in the box is square, so you don't have a lot of waste, which is also making the build out very cheap. We got this vehicle, including a set of new tires for $13,000 Canadian. And then we got the building materials for another $15,000. And yeah, that totals us to $28,000 Canadian. Uh, if you consider it, how much space we get from it, uh, it's Hold on, can I do something? What? Oh. I can stretch out my arms yeah. and my fingertips like brush this piece of trim. It's amazing. So, yeah, we, we got our space maxed out here. And that's, I think, what really inspired me about these box trucks. Yeah, and in terms of like the money saving bit, we try to upcycle as much of the materials as we could. Um, the butcher block tops are reused. We've reused the heater, we've reused... what else? Well, some of the electrical was already in the box. We reused the insulation because the box came insulated. We got some stuff of Kijiji that we could reuse. Our old mattress went into cushions. Yeah, like this thing is yes. reused secondhand as well. And because cost was such a big issue for us and eco-friendly materials tend to be really expensive we try to do our best by upcycling things and reducing our waste at the end of this build we had two bags of garbage and that was it and those are just like odds and ends of scrap pieces that you really couldn't use with everything else we gave way to other van builders nearby or gave way to friends who are also crafty so uh yeah we are so of ourselves. No, we are so proud we, of ourselves. We can be. <laughs> I think we can be um, for building this out and this is like an absolute dream come true. 15 months. 15 months. 15 nice. months of weekend warrior during the lockdown. And yeah we hope you enjoyed coming along on the build series and now that our home is complete we're going to be taking it out to the Rockies barring any COVID protocols and staying as safe as we possibly can. We hope you stay safe as well, and we hope you come along on our adventures. Yeah, make sure you subscribe down there uh, so you don't miss any of our adventures. And otherwise, if you like this video, give us a big thumbs up. And, and we'll, we'll see you, see you on, on the road, road to, to Pitches! Bye! Bye.